Hello kiddies, your uncle Spurt here and welcome to another tragic helping of the worst tech news show on the whole bloody internet. And I hope you've got your nerd pants ready because this week we're chatting chipsets, namely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 which launches later this month, along with the first batch of crotch slappingly delightful 8 Gen 4 smartphones from the likes of OnePlus and Xiaomi. And then after all of that hardcore geek chat, let's slip into something more comfortable and slink our way through another fine selection of highbrow viewer comments. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited I can't even physically stand up. Either that or I'm actually having a stroke. And just in case, let's crack right on after the obligatory jingle action. Techspert Weekly! So Qualcomm has continued to tease us this past week with the slightest of sly glimpses of the upcoming Snapdragon 8 Gen 4, which is set to be stuffed inside of some of the biggest and best flagship phones of the coming year. And there's also some talk about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 possibly being called the Snapdragon 8 Elite instead, similar to the Snapdragon X Elite. And that's just going to get confused and then, let's face it, your uncle's boat gets confused by most things these days. Some days I even struggle to put my pants on without falling down the stairs or setting the house on fire. Now sadly this trailer revealed sweet FA about the chipset itself, but previous leaks have disclosed quite a few geek horrific details, like that Orion CPU for instance, which packs a pair of performance cores alongside six efficiency cores. Don't know about you, but I can already feel my trousers tingling with anticipation. And meanwhile, apparently the GPU will offer a 40% performance boost versus the old 8th Gen 3, so great news for anyone who can't stop playing with their pocket pal. And inevitably, Qualcomm has gone balls deep with its NPU shenanigans as well to power all kinds of AI smart arsery. So you've got smart resolution boosting for displays, you've got image enhancement for smartphone cameras, yada yada yada. And anyway, full details will be gushed out online at the Snapdragon Summit over in Hawaii between October the 22nd and the 24th in front of a live audience who will be praying for it all to finish as quickly as possible so they can go get absolutely shitters at the pool bar. And just a quick top tip for anyone going there, if you suddenly decide it might be a fantastic idea to smash the water slides after already necking 8 or 9 watermelon daiquiris at said bar, just don't. Believe me, it's absolutely impossible to retain any semblance of dignity when you splash down screaming in the deep end, swiftly followed by approximately two litres of brightly coloured Melanie puke. Textpert was a very literal name that day. But what are the very first phones that we can expect to emerge with those Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 brains? Well, the phone featured in Qualcomm's trailer appears to be the upcoming OnePlus 13, which has already leaked more than a cardboard colostomy bag. So I, this should be one of the very first smartphones to have that Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 stuffed inside, and apparently, according to web whisperings, that'll be backed by up to 24 gigs of ruddy RAM. Uh, okay. As well as being a proper bloody nippy, the OnePlus 13 is said to boast an IP69 design, so it should be able to withstand some hardcore water jet action, although whether it can handle violent streams of urgently regurgitated daiquiris remains to be seen. You can also expect the OnePlus 13 to improve on the specs of the old 12 model in several other ways, including rumours of 100 watt fast charging support for the enlarged battery, as well as possibly some form of support for magnetic wireless charging similar to Apple's MagSafe setup. It's a bit of a sketchy rumour right now just based on some throwaway comments that the OnePlus CEO made, but we'll see. And around the same time that that OnePlus 13 emerges, you can also expect Xiaomi to spaff out its fresh new 15 and 15 Pro flagships. And like the Xiaomi 14 before it, the Xiaomi 15 should please stumpy fingered folk like myself, offering premium specs packed into a compact-ish form. This 6.36 inch phone is said to cram in a bigger battery than the current flagship despite being the same size, again with 100 watt wired charging as well as 50 watt wireless charging. And meanwhile the display tech and the camera setup doesn't seem to have changed up too much from the Xiaomi 14, so this would be quite a gentle evolution overall, unless that Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 turns out to be pretty hot sh**. And then there's the Xiaomi 15 Pro which is a proper hand filler at 6.7 inches. As well as upgrading the performance of the 14 Pro, you can expect a whopping great massive 6,000 mAh battery, 
Although while early leaks reckon that the Xiaomi 15 Pro would support 120 watt wide charging, more recent rumors reckon it'll just be 90 watts, so not even as good as the regular compact Xiaomi 15. Which one will it be? Well, depends who you reckon is talking a whole load of trouser danglies. But most of those leaks do at least seem to agree on 80 watt wireless charging, which is pretty bloody nippy. And that design hasn't changed up much from last year's 14 Pro, despite the screen size growing ever so slightly. Although the camera flash appears to have leapt right off the camera bump and buggered off into the middle of the phone, just like on the iPhone 16. The camera setup should be a triple 50 meg lens special, including a Light Fusion 900 sensor, backed by an ultra wide shooter and a fresh new Sony IMX858 telephoto snapper with 5x optical zoom. So whether you like it little or large, Xiaomi should certainly satisfy. And there are plenty more Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 blowers lingering on the horizon as well. So for instance, Oppo's Fine X8 and Fine X8 Pro are expected to arrive with the Snapdragon rival stuffed inside MediaTek's Dimensity 9400. But their Billy Big Bollocks effort, the Fine X8 Ultra, is expected to rock the 8 Gen 4. However, so far, not much is known about the Oppo Fine X8 Ultra model, unlike the Fine X8 and the Fine X Pro, whose specs and features have gushed out everywhere, much like a Hawaiian daiquiri special. So there's probably still a little ways off. You can also expect before the year's end, the likes of the Asus ROG Phone 9, and probably a 9 Pro or a 9 Ultra, as well as flagships from the likes of IQ, Realme, and Honor. And then peering into 2025, all the usual suspects should sport a Snapdragon as well, the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S25 series. Please God, not an Exynos in the UK. And of course, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 7. Is that the one we're up to now? Bloody hell, I'm getting old. But anyway, which of these brainy blowers has you dripping like a leaky tap? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And now it's time for the pot of the show that must have spent this past week smashing a box of Imodium, because it's completely full of shit. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> All right, let's start this week with Etienne Sharp. You eat Etienne, who says, Top shade throwing Chris, though I reckon MKBHD won't be able to hear from the deep end of his swimming pool full of hundred dollar bills. Now, well, he may have a vast fortune, a professional studio, and a whole team full of lackeys who do all of his work for him, but you know what he hasn't got? Well, a one-eyed, foul-mouthed sock puppet, for one. Christ, your breath smells like you just gargled a pint of dog diarrhea. Do us a favour and face the other f***ing way, slaphead. So who's really the richer man here, eh? And no, you don't have to answer that in the comments below. I'm pretty sure I know the answer. Just MDD4 says, Uncle Spurt, today is the day I turn on the notifications bell. A most wise decision, sir. John Whitehead says, Uncle Spurt wallpapers? What's next? Uncle Spurt brand crisps? It's a bloody good idea, actually. I mean, basically, if you just draw a smiley face on a Pringle, you've pretty much got a crisp representation of my head. CP Box Set Playlists says, You definitely watched Rolf's Cartoon Club with them drawings. I mean, to be honest, I can't remember Rolf ever smashing out a picture of a jizzing cock on the show. That might have been a bit obvious. Come on in, little Johnny. What do you think of this drawing then, eh? You want to see one in real life? So apologies to our Aussie chums for that absolutely appalling <laughs> accent right there, or attempted an accent. Raven's Claude says, Imagine landing on that desert island and discovering the self-pitying Philip Schofield as your sole companion. Ugh, it would take an awful lot of tropical booze to get over that particular trauma. That's for sure. I don't think any watermelon daiquiris would cut it. Need an entire vat full of tequila sunrises and slippery nipples. Now, TJ379 says, Somebody please give this great show an award. No hot water and no internet, and they're still entertaining. Oh well, yeah, of course. Um, update. Uh, Texpert Towers 2.0 finally has the bloody internet. We are online, baby. It sounded like it was quite the pitched battle, but Open Ridge came, they drilled and they banged and did whatever they do. And finally, after many hours, they managed to get it working. So now no need to go to Weatherspoons to upload bloody videos anymore. The only time I need to set foot in that place again is when I want to get absolutely shitted for a tenner, which is fairly regularly, to be fair. Now, the topic of discussion last week was, of course, the fresh new Redmi Note 14 Pro and Pro Plus, which have launched China side, should be launching globally, hopefully towards the 
arse end of 2024, but if not early 2025. I had quite a lot of correspondence on those as usual. So for instance, Tom of the Pops says, remember when you could get a mid-range Renmi with a Snapdragon chipset for super cheap? Those were the good days. And fix it 3967 doesn't sound too happy. Deep breath. After the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, I'll never buy another Redmi phone again. It got buggy after the Harmony OS update. The camera sucks. There's no way to turn off the auto softening feature of the photos. And there's a load of bloatware that I can't uninstall. And sorry to hear you've been having such a rough time with it. I mean, personally, I've found that Harmony OS uh, on that particular model and all the other Redmi's that I've tested out hasn't been any more buggy than a lot of other launches that I test out, frankly. Might just be that you've been particularly unlucky, but uh, I agree, the camera does need to calm the f down at times, and the bloatware situation is shit. It is absolutely the software side of these Xiaomi phones that might turn some people off, because generally the hardware's pretty solid. The MTK93 says, I want to know how is the 50 megapixel camera compared with the Redmi Note 13 Pro's 200 meg camera? If the Note 13 Pro is better, then I'll probably go for that, or the Poco X6 Pro. Poco is a bit of a banger for sure. Daniel Dyke says, Hi Uncle Spurt, I've been rocking the Oppo Find X5 Pro for over two years and looking for my next mid-range flagship killer. What would be your suggestion? Well, that is some expert timing right there, Dan, my man. Literally just this week, I put live my update to the best mid-range smartphones right now video, which I've been meaning to do for ages because there's been bloody tons of them these last sort of two, three months. If you can't be asked to watch that for whatever reason, and to be fair, it's the best part of 20 minutes. That's valuable drinking time. Although, hey, why not combine drinking and a bit of Uncle Spur action? The perfect combination. Well, the TLDR version is basically Pixel 8. It's really good. I'm a massive fan of the OnePlus Nord 4 as well. Cracking bit of kit that is. And also the Nothing phones are really, really good. Something a bit more unique. Uh, next up, Imperator Somnium says the S24 Ultra is GOAT. I don't turn on my TV anymore. My mum, on the other hand... Hang on, you you turn on your mum? Oh, no, wait, there's, there's more. My mum, on the other hand, I got her the iPhone 16 and now she wants to switch phones. I mean, come on, what kind of cruel offspring would force an iPhone on their elderly parents? That's right up there with pushing them down the stairs for the inheritance. Dynamo Tight Star says, I've recently got tinnitus, tin tinnitus, how you say it, quite bad, and I found listening to you drawn on is the only thing that makes me feel slightly better about my situation. Who knew there'd be something that would make me welcome tinnitus back? Yes, I, I also have the, the tinnitus, 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 that f***ing ringing in your ears. That's why I listen to a lot of angry, shouty rock music, just to kind of drown it all out. Although, to be fair, it was probably the angry, shouty music that did my lugs in in the first place. That and the endless, happy, hardcore raves from back in the late 90s. On the subject of King Kong fallen to his death, Mythic Sons says it depends on which King Kong you're talking about. That is very true, sir. I am, of course, referring to the original black and white King Kong, where they drag him across to New York and he gets a bit peeved and breaks free and stomps about the place and eventually clambers up the Empire State and has a bit of a trip and a fall. Spoiler alert, by the way, for anyone who hasn't seen that film yet, that film that's almost a century old. And that's always bothered me as well, their master plan of kidnapping King Kong and bringing him to New York and sticking him in a theatre full of people. Because come on, we've all been to the zoo, we've all stood there and watched the monkeys as they merrily, shamelessly jack off, pausing only to scoop up handfuls of their own shit and hoy it at gulping spectators. So just imagine that, except the monkey is bloody 100 foot tall. You know, stick this thing in a theatre and everyone's just going to be drowning in ape jizz or getting smashed to bits by lumps of sh** the size of a Volkswagen. Uh, MK Eds says, where was the eat picture taken that featured near the end of the iPhone camera review? I'm guessing Berlin, but have not been able to find it. Research purposes only, of course. But yes, that was taken in a restaurant called Papillon. Pa Papillon. And this particular piece of graphic art was actually housed in the gents right next to the sinks. There was a wee QR code next to it, so I did scan that just out of pure curiosity, of course. And apparently it's part of the Eat, Pray, Love trilogy by one of these batch bonkers modern artists. All I can say is if that's Eat, then God only knows what Pray and Love involve. I mean, I'm certainly not an artist, 
by any means, but uh, yeah, I just do not get it. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week. A massive thank you to everyone who smashed some comments into last week's video comments box thing. Please do do the same this week and we'll merrily prance away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Next week is looking pretty chill again, so I will be mostly catching up with my big old reviews backlog there. It's got the likes of the Huawei Watch GT5 Pro, which I've had slapped on my spindly wrist for well over a week now. Full review of that incoming. I'm going to try and update my best launches roundup as well, because I have done that for bloody ages. It's been sat on the back burner. And of course, this time next week, come take my hand and let's uh, skip merrily through yet another one of these god-awful doses of real life misery so a massive thank you for watching to the very end of this shower of shit. you are a true gem hope you have a fantastic weekend and i'll see you on the flip side cheers everyone love you